Hello everyone. Um, good evening for all the attendees. Um, good morning for our guest speakers, Dr. Cathy Sretnik from University of North Carolina, Wilmington. And, um, welcome to today's session, another webinar series hosted by Department of Communication, Universitas Erlangga. We are going to talk about um, incorporating social media into integrated marketing communications. Of course, we will not only going to discuss that. We will also going to discuss uh, about how to work with social media influencers to grow your brand, particularly their role in digital tourism industry, especially during the COVID era. Now, uh, we have today with us is Dr. Kathy Sufnik. Um, hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, so I was wondering uh, if you have you been, have you been to Indonesia before, or probably have heard about Indonesia? No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I'd like to visit someday. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that means I will start uh, by I will open today's talk by providing a little bit information about Indonesia and how we are uh, facing toward uh, digitalized. Um, economy. All right. Um, since 2016, Indonesia's e-commerce market has grown significantly. Our growing digital economy is riding on its fast-growing usage of smartphones. Um, Indonesia's growing digital. Um, um, hang on, a good number. Out of the out of the 261.1 million Indonesians. 93.4 million of them are internet users, while 8.7 million of them shop online. As the number for the largest populations in the world with more than 260 million people, Indonesia becomes one of the most important markets for digital marketers in Southeast Asia. Uh, currently, there are about 100 million social media users in Indonesia, and they are not only using it solely for social communication. They are also using uh, social media to do uh, online shopping. And also some of them also use it for um, education and business. I'm sorry, here. Social media influencers exist only uh, on only, uh, social media influencers exist on all the primary social platforms that includes Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and now TikTok in Indonesia. 50% of internet users are um, using Instagram in Indonesia, and there are around 48 million, million of Instagram users in Indonesia. 74% of consumers rely on social networks to guide their purchase. Apart from Facebook, amongst the various social platforms available in Indonesia, Instagram and YouTube proves to be the future of social media networks and influencer marketing as well. Now, why influencer marketing and why influencer marketing kind of works in Indonesia? There are three factors that uh, I can say influence the successful of influencer in Indonesia. There is an emphasis towards center, uh, towards content marketing. Brands which invest greatly increasing uh, quality content will have an edge over the rest. And then the second factor is uh, there's a crucial for brands to become more people-centric and focusing on the audience when implementing each campaign. And then the last factors on, on why influencer marketing is very important is that being risk at first, Indonesia consumers are increasingly rely on, relying on influencers and word of mouth to decide on their purchases. So there are a lot of demands on the use of influencers. There is an opportunity to leverage on the available influencers to bring about more sales through the online platform to be able to uh, through the online platform to be able to leverage on influencer marketing to provide a form of reassurance for the consumers would definitely bring about positive impact on the brand's return of investment. There are spectrum of influencers, and I think uh, Kathy also show a similar um, uh, diagrams on your slide. But uh, this is if we connected with the influencers in Indonesia. 
we have what we call, what we know as a mega influencers. And my students here already know about the mega influencers will be Ayu Ting Ting is one of them, Shahrini, and also Laudia Cynthia Bella. They have around 500k plus followers and drive um, 2% to 5% engagement per post. There is also micro influencers such as uh, Diana Rikasari. Uh, I don't know if kids nowadays still know him. Uh, uh, basically, all the non celebrities uh, with a large base of fans, such as uh, ranging from 50,000 to 500,000 followers. And they are usually professional bloggers, YouTubes, or uh, Telegram, like Rachel Fenya. They have the highest topical uh, relevance with category specific influence, mm -hmm. such as lifestyle, fashion, and also business. When it comes to everyday influencers, the micro influencers, um, Alia Dimitri will be one of the example. Uh, they have like 1,000 to 100,000 followers and drive 25% to 50% engagement per post. Uh, maybe your uh, lecturers are also one of the micro influencers. I am definitely not because I don't have more than 1,000 followers. If I require my students to follow me on Instagram, then I will be probably one of the micro influencers. Maybe Mbak Nisa is one of the micro influencers. Uh, so basically, the micro influencers have the highest brand relevance and resonance on the spectrum of influencers with influence driven by their personal experience with the brand and their strength of relationship with their networks. Now, uh, with the pandemic, Indonesian government actually pay 75 billion rupiah to influencers to boost tourism amid coronavirus outbreak. There were many criticisms surrounding that decisions. Now, what we have at the moment is Indonesian influencers promote the new travel habits with Bali set to reopen domestic tourism in July 31st. Now, since COVID-19 has changed the way we see the future of mobility, can influencers be able to boost tourism still? And that is the thing that we can discuss tonight. Uh, also